Oxford Bookworms, Stage 3. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, retold by Jill Neville. Published in this edition by Oxford University Press, 1992. The Artist, Chapter 1. Through the open windows of the room came the rich scent of summer flowers. Lord Henry Wotton lay back in his chair and smoked his cigarette. Beyond the soft sounds of the garden, he could just hear the noise of London. In the centre of the room, there was a portrait of a very beautiful young man. And in front of it stood the artist himself, Basil Hallward. It's your best work, Basil. The best portrait that you've ever painted, said Lord Henry lazily. You must send it to the best art gallery in London. No, Basil said slowly. No, I won't send it anywhere. Lord Henry was surprised. But my dear Basil, why not, he asked. What strange people you artists are. You want to be famous, but then you're not happy when you are famous. It's bad when people talk about you, but it's much worse when they don't talk about you. I know you'll laugh at me, replied Basil, but I can't exhibit the picture in an art gallery. I've put too much of myself into it. Lord Henry laughed. Too much of yourself into it. You don't look like him at all. He has a fair and beautiful face. And you, well, you look intelligent, of course. But with your strong face and black hair, you are not beautiful. You don't understand me, Harry, replied Basil. Lord Henry's friends always called him Harry. Of course I'm not like him, Basil continued. In fact, I prefer not to be beautiful. Dorian Gray's beautiful face will perhaps bring him danger and trouble. Dorian Gray? Is that his name? Asked Lord Henry. Yes, but I didn't want to tell you. Why not? Oh, I can't explain, said Basil. When I like people a lot, I never tell their names to my other friends. I love secrets, that's all. Of course! agreed his friend. Life is much more exciting when you have secrets. For example, I never know where my wife is, and my wife never knows what I'm doing. When we meet, and we do meet sometimes, we tell each other crazy stories, and we pretend that they're true. You pretend all the time, Harry, said Basil. I think that you're probably a very good husband, but you like to hide your true feelings. Oh, don't be so serious, Basil, smiled Lord Henry. Let's go into the garden. Chapter Two In the garden, the leaves shone in the sunlight, and the flowers moved gently in the summer wind. The two young men sat on a long seat under the shadow of a tall tree. Before I go, said Lord Henry, you must answer my question, Basil. Why won't you exhibit Dorian Gray's portrait in an art gallery? He looked at his friend and smiled. Please give me the real reason now, not the answer that you gave me before. Harry, when an artist feels strongly about a portrait, it becomes a portrait of himself, not of the sitter. The artist paints the face and body of the sitter, but in fact he shows his own feelings. The reason why I won't exhibit this portrait is because I'm afraid it shows the secret of my heart. Lord Henry laughed. And what is the secret of your heart? His friend was silent. Lord Henry picked a flower and looked at it with interest. Two months ago, Basil said at last, I was at a party at Lady Brandon's house. I was talking to friends when I realized that someone was watching me. I turned and saw Dorian Gray for the first time. We looked at each other, and I felt a sudden, very strong fear. 
I felt that this person could change my life, could bring me happiness and unhappiness. Later, Lady Brandon introduced us. We laughed at something that she said and became friends at once. He stopped. Lord Henry smiled. Tell me more, he said. How often do you see him? Every day, answered Basil. I'm not happy if I don't see him every day. He's necessary to my life. But I thought you only cared about your art, said Lord Henry. He is all my art now, replied Basil seriously. Since I met Dorian Gray, the work that I've done is good. The best work of my life. Because of him, I see art in a different way, a new way. When I'm with him, I paint wonderful pictures. Basil, this is extraordinary. I must meet Dorian Gray, said Lord Henry. Basil got up and walked up and down the garden. So that's my secret. Dorian doesn't know about my feelings. And I can't let people see the portrait because it shows what's in my heart. There's too much of myself in it, Harry. Too much. Lord Henry looked at Basil's face before he spoke. Tell me, does Dorian Gray care about you? The artist thought for a few moments. He likes me, he said at last. I know he likes me. Usually he's very friendly to me. But sometimes he seems to enjoy hurting me. He says unkind things that give me pain, Harry. And then I feel that I've given myself to somebody who thinks my heart is a pretty flower. A flower that he can enjoy for a summer's day and can forget tomorrow. Summer days, Basil, said Lord Henry with a smile, can sometimes be too long. Perhaps you'll become tired sooner than he will. Harry, don't talk like that. While I live, Dorian Gray will be important to me. You change your feelings too quickly. You can't feel what I feel. My dear Basil, how unkind you are, Lord Henry was amused. How interesting other people's lives were, he thought. Slowly, he pulled a flower to pieces with his long fingers. I remember now, he continued. I think my aunt knows Dorian Gray. I'd like to meet him very much. But I don't want you to meet him, said Basil. A servant came across the garden towards them. Mr. Dorian Gray has arrived, sir, he said to Basil. You have to introduce me now, laughed Lord Henry. Basil turned to him. Dorian Gray is my dearest friend, he said quietly. He's a good person, and he's young, only 20. Don't change him. Don't try to influence him. Your clever words are very amusing, of course, but you laugh at serious things. Don't take him away from me. He's necessary to my life as an artist. Lord Henry smiled. You worry too much, my friend, he said. And together they walked back into the house. The Friend, Chapter Three. As they entered the house, they saw Dorian Gray. He was sitting by the window and turning some pages of music. You must lend me this music, Basil, he said. Then he turned and saw Lord Henry. Oh, I'm sorry, Basil. I didn't realize... Dorian, this is Lord Henry Wooden, said Basil. He's an old friend of mine. Dorian Gray shook hands with Lord Henry, and while they talked, Lord Henry studied the young man. Yes, he was very good-looking indeed, with his bright blue eyes and his gold hair. He had an open, honest face. There were no dark secrets in that face. Lord Henry could understand Basil's feelings for him. Basil was getting his paints ready. Now he looked at Lord Henry. Harry, he said, I want to finish this portrait of Dorian today. I'm afraid I must ask you to go away. 
Lord Henry smiled and looked at Dorian Gray. Should I go, Mr. Gray? He asked. Oh, please don't leave, Lord Henry. Basil never talks when he's painting, and it's so boring. Please stay. I'd like you to talk to me. Well, Basil? Lord Henry asked. The artist bit his lip. Very well, Harry. Stay, if you must. While Basil painted, Lord Henry talked, and the young man listened. The words filled Dorian's head like music. Wild, exciting music. What a beautiful voice Lord Henry has, he thought. They are only words, but how terrible they are. How bright and dangerous. You cannot escape from words. Dorian began to understand things about himself that he had never understood before. Why had he never seen himself so clearly, he wondered. Lord Henry watched Dorian and smiled. He knew when to speak and when to be silent. He felt very interested in this young man with his wonderful face. Later, they walked in the garden together while Basil worked at the portrait. The rich scent of the flowers was all around them. Dorian looked at the older man and wondered about him. He was tall with a thin, dark face and cool white hands. Dorian liked him, but why did he feel a little afraid of him? You must come out of the sun, Mr. Gray, said Lord Henry. A brown skin isn't fashionable and it won't suit you. Oh, it doesn't matter, laughed Dorian. But it should matter to you, Mr. Gray. Why, asked Dorian. Because you're young, and being young is wonderful. Ah, you smile. You don't think so now. But one day you'll understand what I mean, when you're old and tired and no longer beautiful. You have a wonderfully beautiful face, Mr. Gray. It's true. Don't shake your head at me. And there's nothing more important, more valuable than beauty. When your youth goes, your beauty will go with it. Then you'll suddenly discover that your life is empty. There will be nothing to enjoy, nothing to hope for. Time is your enemy, Mr. Gray. It will steal everything from you. People are afraid of themselves today, afraid to live. But you, with your face and your youth, there's nothing that you cannot do. You must live. Live the wonderful life that is in you. We can never be young again. Youth. Ah, there is nothing in the world as important as youth. Dorian Gray listened and wondered. New ideas filled his head. He felt strange, different. At that moment, Basil called them from the house. Lord Henry turned to Dorian. You're happy that you've met me, Mr. Gray, he said. Yes, I'm happy now. Will I always be happy, I wonder? Always, Lord Henry smiled. What a terrible word. Women use it much too often. What does it mean? It's today that is important. Chapter 4 In the house, Basil Hallwood stood in front of the portrait of Dorian Gray. It's finished, he said. He wrote his name in the corner of the picture. Lord Henry studied the picture carefully. Yes, he said. It's your best work. It's excellent. Mr. Gray, come and look at yourself. Dorian looked at the picture for a long time. He smiled as he saw the beautiful face in front of him, and for a moment he felt happy. But then he remembered Lord Henry's words. How long, he thought, will I look like the picture? Time will steal my beauty from me. I will grow old, but the picture will always be young. And his heart grew cold with fear. Don't you like it, Dorian? asked Basil at last. Of course he likes it, said Lord Henry. It's a very fine work of art. I'd like to buy it myself. It's not mine to sell, Harry. The picture is Dorian's. I wish, cried Dorian suddenly, I wish that I could always stay young and that the picture could grow old. Lord Henry laughed. 
I don't think you would like that, Basil, would you? No, I wouldn't like it at all, agreed Basil with a smile. Dorian turned, his face red and angry. Yes, you like your art better than your friends, he said to Basil. How long will you like me? Only while I'm beautiful, I suppose. Lord Henry is right. Youth is the most important thing in the world. Oh, why did you paint this picture? Why should it stay young while I grow old? I wish the picture could change and I could stay as I am. I would give anything, yes, anything for that. He hid his face in his hands. Dorian, Dorian, said Basil unhappily. Don't talk like that. You're my dearest friend. He turned to Lord Henry. What have you been teaching him? He asked angrily. Why didn't you go away when I asked you? Lord Henry smiled. It's the real Dorian Gray, that's all. Basil turned and walked quickly over to the portrait. It's my best work, but now I hate it. I will destroy it now, before it destroys our friendship. He picked up a long knife, but Dorian was there before him. No, Basil, don't. You can't destroy it. That would be murder. So, said Basil coldly, you've decided that you like the portrait after all. Like it, said Dorian. I'm in love with it. I cannot live without it. Later, during tea, Lord Henry invited Basil and Dorian to go with him to the theatre that night. Basil refused, but Dorian was happy to accept. Stay and have dinner with me, Dorian, said Basil. But no, Dorian preferred to go to the theatre with Lord Henry. As the door closed behind Dorian and Lord Henry, Basil turned back to the picture. I shall stay here with the real Dorian Gray, he said sadly to himself. Chapter 5 The next morning, Lord Henry went to visit his aunt, Lady Agatha. She was surprised to see him. I thought you fashionable young men never got up until the afternoon, she said. Ah, but my dear aunt, I need some information, you see, replied Lord Henry. I met Dorian Gray yesterday, and I'd like to know more about him. Oh, he's Lord Kelso's grandson, said Lady Agatha. His mother was Lady Margaret Deverer, a very beautiful woman. She ran away from home to marry a poor soldier. He was killed a few months later, and she died soon after her son was born. She was a lovely woman. Dorian Gray has her beauty, and he will, I understand, have his grandfather's money. He is, agreed Lord Henry, extraordinarily good-looking. Come to lunch, invited his aunt. Dorian Gray will be here, and you can meet him again. I'd love to come, smiled Lord Henry. As he left, Lord Henry thought about this sad story. He became more interested than ever in this beautiful young man, Dorian Gray. He remembered the night before when Dorian had watched him with his bright blue eyes, half wondering, half afraid. He does not yet know himself, thought Lord Henry with a smile. But I can teach him, yes. I can influence him in any way that I please. I will teach him to discover the fire of youth and love and life. The conversation among the fashionable people at Lady Agatha's lunch was quick and clever. Lord Henry talked in his lazy, amusing way and knew that Dorian Gray was watching and listening. After a while, the conversation turned to a friend's plans to marry an American girl. Why can't these American women stay in their own country? They're always telling us that it's a paradise for women, said Lord Burden. It is, said Lord Henry. That's the reason why they're so happy to escape from it. They say, laughed the man next to Lady Agatha, that when good Americans die, they go to Paris. Really? 
And where do bad Americans go to when they die? asked Lady Agatha. They go to America, said Lord Henry. People smiled, and the conversation moved on to other things. Lord Henry took ideas and played with them. He gave them wings. They flew like brightly coloured birds around the room. People laughed and smiled and told him that he should be more serious. But Dorian Gray never took his eyes away from Lord Henry. After lunch, Lord Henry said that he was going to the park. And as he left the room, Dorian Gray touched his arm. May I come with you? he asked. But I thought you'd promised to go and see Basil Hallwood, Lord Henry replied. Yes, but I'd prefer to come with you. Please let me, said Dorian. I want to listen to you talking. Nobody speaks as well as you do. Ah, I've talked enough for today, Lord Henry smiled. But you may come with me if you want to. The Young Man in Love, Chapter 6 One afternoon, a month later, Dorian Gray visited Lord Henry. Dorian was excited and his eyes were shining. Harry, he began, I'm discovering life. I'm doing everything that you told me to do. I'm in love. Who are you in love with? asked Lord Henry calmly. With an actress. Oh, everybody's in love with an actress at some time in their lives, said Lord Henry. No, Harry, this is different. She's wonderful. Her name's Sybil Vane, and one day she'll be a very famous actress. She really is extraordinarily clever. My dear boy, said Lord Henry in his lazy voice, no woman is extraordinarily clever. Women have nothing to say, but they say it beautifully. There are only five women in London who can give you real conversation. But tell me about your wonderful actress. How long have you known her? Harry, I'll tell you all about her, but you must promise not to laugh. Lord Henry listened and smiled. Dorian had discovered an old, dirty theatre in a poor street in London. He had gone in to look for adventure, but had found love, he told Lord Henry. The play had been Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Romeo was a fat old man with a terrible voice, but Juliet... Oh, Harry, she was about 17, with dark brown hair and a face like a flower. She was the loveliest girl that I'd ever seen in my life, and her voice was like music. I love her, Harry. She's everything to me. Every night I go to see her in different plays, and she's always wonderful. That's the reason, I suppose, why you never have dinner with me now, said Lord Henry. But Harry, you and I see each other every day. We always have lunch together, said Dorian in surprise. I have to go and see Sybil in the theatre every night. You and Basil must come with me to see her. Then you can see yourself how wonderful she is. Come tomorrow. Very well, my dear Dorian. We'll come and watch your Juliet. But you'll be in love many times, you know. This is only the beginning. After Dorian had gone, Lord Henry smiled to himself. How amusing it was to watch this young man, he thought. He was very different now from the frightened boy in Basil Hallwood's house. He had opened like a flower in the sun and was learning to enjoy every pleasure in life. And it is I, thought Lord Henry, who have taught him how to do this. When Lord Henry returned home that night, there was a letter for him lying on the table. It told him that Dorian Gray was going to marry Sybil Vane. Chapter 7 Mother, mother, I'm so happy, cried the girl. And you must be happy too. Mrs. Vane put her thin white hands on her daughter's head. I'm only happy when I see you in the theatre, she said. And we are poor. We need the money. Don't forget that. What do we know about this young man? You don't know his real name or anything about him. No, but I call him Prince Charming. He's everything to me. 
I love him and he loves me. Oh, mother, let me be happy. You're too young to think of love, said her mother. She looked at her daughter's lovely face and tried to warn her of the dangers of love, but the girl did not listen. She was locked in her prison of love. At that moment, the girl's brother entered the room. He was a heavy, dark young man, not at all like his sister. I've heard about a gentleman who visits you every night at the theatre, he said to his sister. Who is he? What does he want? Oh, James, don't be angry with me today, cried Sybil. You're leaving for Australia tomorrow, and today is your last day. Come for a walk with me in the park. I'll go and get ready. She danced out of the room, and her mother and brother could hear her singing as she ran upstairs. James Vane turned to his mother. My new life as a sailor will keep me away from England for many years, he said. But I don't like to leave Sybil alone. Sybil has me, her mother, you know, said Mrs Vane quietly. Then take care of her. James Vane gave his mother a long, hard look. If that man hurts my sister, I'll find him and kill him like a dog. Chapter 8 As they waited for Dorian Gray the next night, Lord Henry and Basil Hallward discussed Sybil Vane. Basil had not been happy at the news of Dorian's marriage plans. An actress, he had cried. But Dorian is a gentleman, the grandson of Lord Kelso. He can't marry an actress. Why not? Lord Henry had said coolly. He'll love her wildly for six months, and then suddenly he'll be in love with another woman. It'll be very amusing to watch. But when Dorian arrived and told the story of his love, Basil became a little happier. You're right, he told Dorian. The woman that you love must be wonderful. I can see already that she's changed you. Yes, said Dorian happily. Yes, Sybil has changed me. From this moment, I shall be good. I'll never listen again, Harry, to your dangerous ideas about life and pleasure. Lord Henry smiled. Ah, he said. When we are happy, we are always good. But when we are good, we are not always happy. Basil Hallwood shook his head at this. But Dorian laughed. You cut life to pieces with your clever words, Harry. The theatre was crowded and noisy, but when Sybil Vane appeared, everyone became silent. She was one of the most beautiful girls that Lord Henry had ever seen. Lovely. Lovely, he said softly. But although Sybil looked beautiful, her voice sounded unnatural. She spoke Juliet's words, but there was no feeling in them. Her voice was lovely, but it took away all the life from the words. People in the theatre began talking loudly, and after half an hour, Lord Henry stood up and put on his coat. She's very beautiful, Dorian, but she's not an actress, he said. Let's go. I think that Miss Vane must be ill, added Basil. We'll come another night. Dorian did not look at them. Go away. I want to be alone, he said miserably, and as his friends left, he covered his face with his hands. When the play came to its painful end, Dorian went to see Sybil. I wasn't a very good Juliet tonight, she said, and looked at him with love in her eyes. You were terrible, said Dorian coldly. My friends were bored. I was bored. I suppose you were ill. She did not seem to hear him. Dorian, she cried, before I knew you, the theatre was my only life. I thought that it was all true. I knew nothing but shadows, and I thought that they were real. But you've taught me the difference between art and life. How can I pretend to be Juliet, to feel Juliet's love, when I know now what true love is? Dorian turned his face away from her. But I loved you for your art, because you were a wonderful actress, he said. His voice was hard. You have killed my love. Without your art, you are nothing. I never want to see you again. 
Sybil's face was white with fear. You're not serious, are you, Dorian? She asked. She touched his arm with her small, gentle hand. Don't touch me, he shouted angrily. He pushed her away, and she fell to the floor and lay there like a broken bird. Dorian, please don't leave me, she cried. I love you better than anything in the world. Don't leave me. Dorian Gray looked down at her with his beautiful eyes. There was no love or gentleness in his face. I'm going, he said at last. I don't wish to be unkind, but I don't want to see you again. Without another word, he left her. All night he walked through the streets of London. When morning came, he went home. When he entered his house, he saw the portrait of himself that Basil Horwood had painted. There was something different about it, he thought. The face had changed. There was something unkind and cruel about the mouth. It was very strange. He picked up a mirror and looked at his own face and then looked again at the face in the portrait. Yes, it was different. What did this change mean? Suddenly, he remembered his wish in Basil Hallwood's house. His wish that he could stay young, but the picture could grow old. The idea was impossible, of course. But why did the face in the picture have that cruel, unkind mouth? Cruel? Had he been cruel to Sybil Vane? He remembered her white, unhappy face as she lay at his feet. But she had hurt him, too. No, Sybil Vane was nothing to him now. But the picture watched him with its beautiful face and its cruel smile. It had taught him to love his own beauty. Would it also teach him to hate his own heart, his own soul? No, he would go back to Sybil Vane. He would marry her, try to love her again. Poor child, how cruel he had been to her. They would be happy together. He covered the picture and quickly left the room. The Death of Love, Chapter 9 It was long past midday when Dorian woke up. His servant brought him tea and his letters, but he did not read them. Yesterday seemed like a bad dream, but when he went downstairs, he saw the covered picture. Should he uncover it, he wondered? Had the face in the picture really changed? Did he want to know? He lit a cigarette and thought for a while. Yes, he had to know. He lifted the cover. There was no mistake. The portrait had really changed. He could not explain it, could not understand it. It was impossible, but it had happened. Dorian felt sick and ashamed. He did not know what to do or what to think. Finally, he sat down and wrote a long letter to Sybil Vane. He covered page after page with wild words of love. Then suddenly, he heard Lord Henry's voice at the door. Dorian jumped up and covered the picture. My dear boy, said Lord Henry as he came in, I'm so sorry, but you must not think too much about her. Do you mean about Sybil Vane? asked Dorian. There's nothing to be sorry about. I want to be good, and I'm going to be happy. I shall marry Sybil Vane. I'm not going to break my promise to her. Marry Sybil Vane? Lord Henry stared at Dorian. Didn't you get my letter? I haven't read my letters today, said Dorian slowly. Lord Henry walked across the room and took Dorian's hands in his own. Dorian, he said quietly, don't be frightened. My letter told you that Sybil Vane is dead. She killed herself at the theater last night. No, no, that's impossible, cried Dorian. He pulled his hands away and stared at Lord Henry with wild eyes. This is terrible, Harry. I have murdered Sybil Vane. She killed herself said Lord Henry calmly. You didn't murder her. She killed herself because she loved you. 
It's very sad, of course, but you mustn't think too much about it. You must come and have dinner with me. Harry, listen. Last night, I told her that I didn't want to see her again. But after I left her, I realized how cruel I had been. I decided to go back to her, to marry her. And now she is dead. Harry, what shall I do? You don't know the danger that I am in. My dear Dorian, said Lord Henry, marriage with Sybil Vane was not for you. No, no. Marriages like that are never successful. The man quickly becomes unhappy and bored. Of course, he's kind to his wife. We can always be kind to people that we're not interested in. But the woman soon discovers that her husband is bored, and then she either becomes terribly unfashionable or wears very expensive hats that another woman's husband has to pay for. The young man walked up and down the room. I suppose that's true, he said unhappily. But Harry, I don't think that I'm cruel, do you? Lord Henry smiled. He told Dorian Gray what he wanted to hear. And then he told him clever, amusing stories about the women that he himself had loved. He said that Sybil Vane's death was a beautiful end to a love story for an actress. The girl never really lived, he continued, so she never really died. Don't cry for Sybil Vane. She was less real than Juliet. After a while, Dorian Gray looked up. You have explained me to myself, Harry, he said slowly. How well you know me. But we won't talk of this again. It's been a wonderful lesson for me. That's all. When Lord Henry had left, Dorian uncovered the picture again. He had to choose between a good life and a bad life, he thought. But then he realized that, in fact, he had already chosen. He would stay young forever and enjoy every wild pleasure that life could give him. The face in the picture would grow old and ugly and unkind, but he would stay beautiful forever. He covered the picture again and smiled. An hour later, he was at Lord Henry's house, and Lord Henry was smiling at his side.